Number two on the list of the top 10 games in Hillsborough Hops history came on June 17th, 2013, the first ever home game in franchise history. Our guest is Zach Ascara, who was with the Hops that entire first season in 2013, as well as part of 2014. And first of all, Zach, how are you? Good, sir. Thank you. Appreciate yeah, it. Coming to us from Riverside, California, where he is now a police officer. After his professional playing days came to an end, he, uh, he got into police work. And um, first of all, what are your overall memories of when you're coming off the campus at Cal Baptist University, you get signed by the Diamondbacks, they assign you to Hillsboro, and you get driven out from the airport, and you arrive at the ballpark for the first time. When you saw Ron Tonkin Field, what did you think? You know, I think when, when I got picked up, you know, you you talk about working from the time when you're five to now, like you have a dream, right? And so your dream is to play professionally. And so it was just that whole, you know, the day that I got picked up to the day that I actually arrived on the field um, was just a blur. And the fact that you that I was going to a new team and to, to a brand new organization um well, actually, not the organization but a brand new af affiliate was w was cool and and when you step on that field and, and you see just the just how well it was built how well it, it how well it was made and the detail that went into it um, at least for me that's that's what i imagined it would be like um now unfortunately uh, I went to some fields that, that, that weren't so nice. And so I think it set me up to expect that every field that I play at was going to be as nice as, as that one. And, and it wasn't so, but man, it was just so cool to see a brand new field and to know that I was going to be on the team that I got to play on it. Right, yeah. People who come to Hillsborough are very fortunate in that regard. And very. I think one of the things they told you at the very beginning uh, probably some roving instructor came and sat everybody down and said, hey, you know, this is nice right here, but you're not going to see anything like this until maybe you get to AAA in Reno. Maybe. I mean, that's yeah. how good the ballpark is. Definitely. Yeah. Well, that was a magical night that first night, June 17, 2013. The Hops beat Eugene 12 nothing, and you were a big part of that. You started and hit cleanup. You had a, a triple and a double, an RBI a couple of runs scored. Um, what are your overall memories of that first game in Hillsboro? I think overall, I just remember the excitement. I mean, you're, you're talking about a state that loves the baseball and, uh, and, and the fact that we, uh, that, and, and the town that, that it does. And so the fact that we were the inaugural team and, and the fact that we performed so well, there was just an excitement in the fans. There was excitement amongst us in the team. Um, and it's been a bit, and so I, I, can't, I can't remember uh, anything spe specific, but I know for me, um, playing at such a nice field and playing in front of fans that, that don't even know you, but, but they're cheering you on and, and just the excitement and the energy that they had was awesome. Yeah. Uh, fun fact, the Hops, including the postseason now in their seven seasons, 2013 to 2019, they have uh, played 555 games. Only once in franchise history has the team scored runs in six consecutive innings uh, in the same game. And it was the first six innings they ever played at home. Only once has it happened, the first six innings they ever played at home, they scored runs. You piled them on, your teammates, I mean, everybody was a factor in the lineup that night. How many of those guys that you were teammates with in 2013 and in 2014 do you keep in touch with? You know, I keep in touch uh, almost once a month with Parr, uh, Josh Parr. Uh -huh. And so I know Josh's brother, Jordan, uh, actually played on the team as well. Um, and it's sad to, to say, but I think Josh is the only one. Uh, I kept in touch with Dan Polka for a tiny bit. Uh, I think Polka came towards the end of the, uh, the end of the year on 2013 mm -hmm. and I played with him in South Bend. Uh, but I want to say Josh Parr is, is the one guy that I, that I actually stay in 
touch with. Uh, I'll, I'll talk to them at least once a month. Right, and, and it, it's interesting what happens with players. Um, of course, everybody's goal is to make the major leagues, but not many do, and it's interesting to track, okay, what do they do when their careers are over? You're a police officer, and do I understand correctly that, that Josh Parr is in the ministry? Is that true? Yeah, so Josh Parr does campus ministry at Illinois, and so I, I'm actually one of his um, one of his sponsors, I think. Um, I'm not sure if you would describe it as that, but yeah, he's been uh, he's been running small groups, uh, seminars there, and and so he he got into that, and he's actually with the Navigators, and so. Uh, it's an organization that that has, um, I guess, clubs or ministries in many different large schools, and so he joined them, and then he got assigned there, which is his home town. And um, him and Julie Parr actually just had their first kid. Uh, they they had a daughter a couple months ago. So. Oh yeah, good, good, yeah. good for good for them. Um, well, it's great that you're able to keep in touch with a former teammate uh, like that. And, and it doesn't surprise me that, that, that you two uh, guys keep in touch, great A human beings to be sure. Um, the next year, um, August of 2014, um, you hit the first Grand Slam in Hillsborough Hops history. And uh, believe it or not, for all the success the Hops have had, in their seven seasons, they've only hit four Grand Slams. And you have one of them. Matter of fact, that night, um, you had six runs batted in, and that set the franchise record, which has been matched only once. I think Ramon Hernandez, a couple of years later, had six in one game, but it remains the franchise record. Um, do you remember what, what do you remember about that Grand Slam, which you hit at Salem Kaiser? You know, I, I actually do recall. Um, I, I don't remember the count specifically, but I know I had two strikes on me and so my mindset was just to fight and uh and the guy on the mound i don't know his net name but he was throwing hard um and he actually threw me an inside fastball um that i just got my my uh my bat to and it was one of those those swings and those hits where you don't feel it and so when i hit it i knew i hit it well because I, I didn't even feel it um, and then I just saw the ball and then I started to, to run hard because I always run hard. And, um, and by the time I got to first base, um, I forget who was coaching first base, but he essentially said, Hey kid, stop the, you know, stop. Uh -huh. right. Good. Um, and so it was a fun night, right? It's, it's, it's always nice to, to, to have a good night and, I forget who came up to me at the end of the game, but they they said too that hey, that was the first uh, first Grand Slam um, for the Hops. Now, obviously, yeah. the Hops were still young, and so I thought it was still cool. But I knew that it was going to happen again. So. Yeah, right. Um, one of the great parts of that story, and I've told the story on the air on our broadcast before, is that uh, the mayor hopped the fence and went into the farmer's field in the dark. It was a night game, went all the way out of the ballpark. And uh, on the other side of the light standards, you can't see very well. So the mayor is walking around in a farmer's field in the dark, looking for the grand slam ball. Of course, he wasn't the mayor yet, but uh, he has always been one of the foremost Hops fans. And of course, I'm talking about Steve, Steve right? Calloway, yeah, yeah. Who, yeah. Who, whom you lived with. And yeah. uh, he would later become Hillsborough's mayor, but he yeah. actually climbed the fence. And he's over there, and fans who saw the ball land are, are directing him, no, it's a little bit further, no, it's a little bit to the right. And eventually he found the baseball. Really? This distinguished guy. And um, you may not remember this, um, but if I recall the story correctly, um, Steve offered the ball to you, and uh, you said, no, that ball should go to the hops. You know, do you not remember that? I, I know he tried to give me the ball. Um, I'm I'm not one to, to keep things and, and uh, I'm not going to put it up and, and say, Hey, look what I did. Um, and so I, I don't remember saying where, where it was, it should go to, but, but I do recall telling Steve that, Hey, he, he's the one that actually got it. So he could have it. So. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but Steve, Steve actually, he's, he was such a huge 
lesson to me because um, obviously when I came back in 2014, um, you know, I, I got sent down and so nobody ever wants to get sent down. And so the fact that he actually took me, me in and, and he was just a, he's a great, a great man. And I actually stayed in contact with, with, with him as well. It's been a bit, but I talked to him, uh, it's probably par and then him and then Steve. So I've talked to him a few times, uh, since I, since, uh, 2014. Well, full, full disclosure, Steve is a very good friend of mine, and um, we had, uh, with the hops, had lost touch with you over the last couple of years, and so he was the guy I asked for your email address so uh, we could do this interview, and, and, uh, and he said to tell you hello. Um, take me back, you had mentioned, um, we touched on early your thoughts on, on Ron Tonk and Field, but go back a little further than that. Um, coming out of Cal Baptist, refresh my memories, at Division Two or Division Three. So it's kind of weird. Uh, it, it was in a IA my first year, and then we made the transition to Division Two. And so my uh, my actually sorry my junior and my senior year were Division Two, and actually they only stayed in Division Two for a short amount of time because now they're Division One, and so they moved to Division One, I believe, uh, after the 2018 year. And so okay. now they're competing um, in, in the WAC. Okay, yeah, so. right. Um, but from NAIA, you, you, you signed to go to college in an NAIA school, which yeah. became a Division II school, and um, then drafted and signed by the Arizona Diamondbacks. People dream of being a professional baseball player, but what are the specifics of it once you sign and at, you know, who tells you, do they send you an airplane ticket? Do you, you went, I think you went to Arizona and had a physical, right. what happened during those few days between the time when the draft happened and when you arrived in Hillsborough? So you really don't have a lot of time to think and to kind of soak it in. I, I know I got the call and I believe within two days I was already on a plane. Um, and so I spent that, that first day trying to, you know, wrap my head around what, what had happened and then trying to pack and trying to say goodbye, you know, mom and dad. And, and so um, you're on a plane, uh, we get to Arizona with everybody else that they also picked up and you, you get your physical, I think day one. Um, you know, you, you kind of go down and, you know, you meet with management and you meet with HR, you meet with medical. So you kind of get all that logistical stuff done and then you practice for a few days. And I think we were there playing sim games for a tiny bit. And then that's when they kind of send you off to, I know, either the Missoula Offspray, I believe, uh -huh. or the Pops. Right. And so I didn't know exactly the what team was better for me to go to. Um, I know that the Hops, that they said the, uh, the Northwest was going to be harder to hit in. And so right off the bat, I, I wouldn't call it upset, but I'm like, okay, you know, I'm actually going to have to perform. Not that I didn't think that, that, that I would, but they said that Northwest, the teams up there and the parks up there are going to be definitely harder to, to hit in. And then they fly you up there. And then I think we had media day the day after, or maybe even the day of, and, and it's kind of the same thing. Okay. Here's your, here's your host. Here's your uniforms, media day. And so it all goes fast. I mean, from the day that you get picked up to the day that you play, there's, it's just go, 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 go. And, and there's, uh, there's no time to ease into it. When you're a no. high school baseball player, uh, you know, you're, you're there on, you're on your, your high school campus with your, with your friends and, and, uh, you know, you, you're there in September and you're not playing a game until maybe February, maybe March. Right. Same thing in college. You get there, you go through fall practice and then start up again in January and maybe late January, early February, you have a game. Here, 
you go to Arizona, you meet some of these guys, have a couple of workouts, come to Hillsborough, have a couple of more, and then boom, you're thrust into a 76 game and 80 day season. Is there, did you have a sense like, okay, here I am, I'm, I'm not one of these division one guys. I'm not somebody who's been in the organization the last couple of years. I'm brand new. I'm from a lower level school. Did you have a sense that I got to show something early on so I can prove myself? You know, I think all of us that got picked up, you know, especially when you go in, in rounds like 15 and above, you know, all of us know that, hey, we're, we're not one of the top 15 dudes. And so we, I mean, everybody there, no matter if you are one of the top 15, you know that you have to prove yourself in order to move on or in order to continue to play. And baseball is different because there's just so many players out there. I mean, every day you have to compete. I mean, you're talking about 30 professional teams that have six affiliates and then there's affiliates in the Dominican Republic. And so you're just talking about this ginormous pool of players and essentially you're competing with them because there's only so many spots in the bigs. And so um, it's very competitive and, and sure, you know, coming from a D2, uh, you know, at the start you do kind of get a sense like, okay, how, how am I going to compete with, with thousands of players that want the same exact spot that I have. And they might have more experience in, in a D1 or, or they might even have been a part of the organization for a longer period of time. Um, but you got to get over that fast because, yeah. you know, the, you know, kind of that, that thing, if you, if you already think you can't do it, then you have no shot because there's guys that think that they can, who don't have a shot. I mean, it's competitive. So, the the idea of being mentally strong i mean guys would are going to say that over and over and over because there's a game you know up here right and uh you know there's guys that that played at a d3 that ended up making it all the way mm -hmm. and so i think it's your mental toughness and your ability to say hey i'm just going to continue to do what what i do and to get better and and, and improve and so i tried to have that mental uh toughness and knowing that nobody was going to work harder than me somebody might be better than me but no one's going to work harder than me so yeah, i remember that about you um at, at, and you had a strong first year with the hops um yes. yeah. what what you just said about competing with everybody else in the organization uh, other players have told me that okay you get signed you go to a little mini camp um, but nobody else is there because they're already off, off playing their seasons. I mean, there's a few right. players there, but um, most of the players in the organization are, are off in there with their long season affiliates. And some of these players have told me that they didn't realize all the competition involved for those few spots in the big leagues until the next year when they went to their first spring training and they saw the massive players there. Was that true for you? Yeah. I mean, it's – so when you get – picked up you know you're you competing against you know four or five um guys that are fighting for your spot right and so that's kind of typical and and so you you always compete with them but in spring you show up and there's even more guys there because now you have six teams you have the big league team and then you have guys that are there that might not make it uh, that might not even make it on a team, right? So you just have a massive pool of players that you're like, man, I got to compete against 60 guys just for my spot. And, uh, and it's intimidating, or it can be. I mean, just because these guys are, have just been blessed, you know, some of them, just the balls that, that they hit or their arm strength or just how physical they, they are. Um, again, you have to be mentally strong strong because when you show up and you see how many guys that you have to beat out uh you could defeat yourself right there yeah so. yeah and, and and yet um I, this always amazes me that both these things can exist at the same time there's such competition for those few spots in the big leagues and you're competing with everybody else in the organization or or everybody that that plays your position and yet when you get on a team Everybody comes together. There's no sense of, hey, it, it, it's me or you. You know, it, it's, it's us 
while you guys are in that same uniform. I've, I've, I can't think of a single time when I've gotten the sense that, that some guy, uh, at least in the, at, at, uh, at the Class A level, was not just for himself. I did 10 years of AAA ball, and I can count on you know, one hand a number of guys that, that I thought were playing just for themselves. But those are few and far between. And I've never seen it in A-ball. Guys get there, and hey, they're on a team, and you guys want to win, right? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's, it's, it's very hard to do both. I mean, and, and I say hard, but, but it's, still, it's still something that we do, right? We're trying to do our individual best, but no one wants to be legit on a bad t- team, right? Winning, winning is, is what you want to do, no matter if you're in the big leagues or if you're in A ball or if you're in D1, 2, 3, right? Everybody wants to win. And uh, most guys have this sense that you need a team to, to win. And so uh, it's very difficult, but I mean, it's, I, I think that's one of the cool things about playing team sports is that there's a lot of individual competitions amongst the team, but when it comes down to it, man, this, it's us against them, right? It's a team. Hey, I'm, I'm competing against you, but I'm going to do whatever I can so that both of us wins. And, uh, and man, that's why I became a police officer is because I, I love being a part of a team. And, and so that team atmosphere, I can't get enough of it. Uh, yeah, that's great. Um, you were released by the Diamondbacks, I think, uh, in spring training of 2015. Did you have any thoughts of trying to continue your playing career elsewhere? So I did. I played independent ball. Oh. Um, yeah, I actually played independent ball uh, with – Wow. Uh, the Windy City. Oh, the Thunderbolts? Is that what they yeah, are? The yeah, Windy okay. City uh-huh. Thunderbolts. And so that's actually up in Chicago. Um, and, you know, it was a very different experience. Um, I think independent ball could be very good and it could be a good opportunity for some. Uh, it wasn't a very good fit for me. Um, you know, I think. Uh, I was, it just wasn't a good fit. And so I, I did not perform very well. Uh, I was definitely not as mentally strong as I could have been. Um, I continue to, to strive to be good, good but um, I played about half the season or maybe about three fourths and then I was let go. And then, uh, and then at that point in time, I thought it was, it was a good opportunity that I had taken my talents as far as I could and, uh, and I knew that it w- I didn't feel just because I didn't try h- hard enough. And so once I took it as far as I could, then, then I, was, uh, I was at peace with saying I'm done. Yeah, and you will always be remembered as an inaugural hop. Can it really be seven years since you and the hops started together? Yeah, you know what? It's, uh, it, it goes by fast and rich. Um, I mean, I got, married, I got married in 2015. Um, and so I got married that same year, probably about, I think it was a couple months after I got let go. Um, and then my wife and I had had our child a year and a half after that. And then we had our second one and then we had our third one. And so like, I look at myself now and I have a, a job, a house, you know, wife, you know, I have two daughters and, and then a son and, uh, time goes by fast and you know it's it's kind of when, when you reached out to me um, just trying to think back to, to when I played there it just it, it amazes me how long ago it seems yeah yeah well you'll always be a part of Hillsborough Hops history and the Hops family and if, if you and your wife and kids are ever up this way you got to let us know and uh, hopefully there'll be baseball back at Ron Tonkin Field soon. I'd love to have you out there and maybe throw out the first pitch or something like that. That would be awesome. Is, uh, are, are you guys, is the season postponed, obviously? Yeah, yeah. No, no minor league baseball um, anywhere in the country this year, at least affiliated minor league baseball. I think a couple of independent leagues gave it a go. Uh, okay. but no affiliated minor league baseball. And we're, we're looking ahead to 2021. Nice. Yeah. Well, hey, thanks a lot. I really appreciate your time yeah. and uh, g- good luck in your career. Thank you, Rich. Appreciate it.